Well, hello, welcome to this episode of the Photography Podcast. It's season four, episode eight, I do believe. Sorry we weren't here last week, just one of those things was unavoidable. Uh, but we're all, all back, well, we're nearly all back this week. Um, Dave's not here, but there's five of us here this week. How are you guys, all right? Yeah, good. Good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Excellent, excellent. Um, I should point out um, to those eagle-eyed of you, you may have spotted that we've added another another face onto the website uh, of a new uh, permanent member, um, and that's Adam. So Adam Gibbs is going to be joining us um, sort of the first first week in February. It's unlikely we'll get to a point where all seven of us are on at once because we're all got our own sort of individual well i haven't i don't do anything i'm here all the bloody time aren't I? But, <laughs> but mo- most people have got their own individual commitments so we're probably going to be six ish but we, we we thought adam's really good value for a start but also adding that seventh person gives us more availability so so yeah so for the last couple of months before we go on a break <laughs> for x amount of time he'll be here so so yeah so Hopefully you'll be pleased to hear that. Anyway, what what you guys what we've been up to? Anything exciting this week? Bugger all. I had a couple of, I had a couple of days in the lakes. Oh yeah, mm. which was, in the uh, snow. Which was yeah, very very eventful. I must admit, I um, I went up on the Tuesday, and it took me pretty much nine hours to get to the lakes, um, because because of the the, the snow. I, I think I missed a lot of the actual snow fall uh, by the time I arrived, but the roads were, yeah, kind of people spinning out all over the place where I was going. Um, I got to, there's, there's a road, people are familiar with it, the Lake District, there's the, the road between Ambleside and Coniston. Um, that was, I mean, that was that's a main road, but that was bad enough. And I got to just before a, a small hill, um, and I could see people spinning out and I just pulled over on the left hand side, put me hazards on. Um, and it seemed that anyone that didn't have perhaps winter tires on or four by four, they just couldn't make the hill. Um, there was so many people going past me, attempting it, sliding back down, turning and then kind of shooting back towards Ambleside. But luckily enough, a, a group of guys came along and, uh, they just got a load of salt and sprinkled it all down the hill. And that was my cue to attempt it, which I did, and I made it up. But then I turned off the main road, um, which is the road then at, at Skelwith Bridge down to Great Langdale um, by the River Brathy. I know Stuart knows it well, mm. but like where we kind of went, yep. you know, mm. and um, I spun out twice there. Uh, I had to wait for a four by four or a van to go by me to break up the compacted snow. Um, but anyway, once I got into the campsite, um, but that was it. I couldn't get out for two days after that because it froze to minus seven one night, minus nine the other night. Well, that was what the forecast was. I didn't have I could, no way of checking it. Uh, but that road just become an ice rink. The only people that would have been grateful would have been Torval and Dean, I think, for those two days. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I had a nice couple of days, but I was limited to where I could go. I could only go wherever I could walk from that campsite mm. so yeah it was nice well, that photo where you were looked amazing Look, looked beautiful with all the snow the photo up on the I, was I, it i tell you what uh, that was up by harrison stickle and i've been up there like a few times and I, I i went up there once with a fully loaded pack tent everything and it took me about an hour, I think, to hike from the new Dungeon Gill up to Stickle Tarn. We we're carrying quite a lot of weight. Um, this time, just with my camera bag, it took me close on to two hours. I've never hiked in conditions like that before, where the snow is really thick. And I'm really not exaggerating. The following day, every muscle from my waist down hurt. Like, like mm. real pain even trying to get up off the floor i felt like i was 155 not 55 it was just <laughs> i was in agony um it was worth it but it really goes to show that there's a, a difference between nice sunny day hiking and then hiking in them real harsh winter conditions so yeah i can imagine I can imagine what about you Stu? you've been out much in it uh i was in a synth for a week um, okay. So we we kind of got to 
for since just before all this snow came in. Um, I'd been watching the, the forecasts sort of eagle-eyed for about three weeks leading up to it. And I, I think we kind of knew we were going to miss the snow. Um, but we ended up getting some absolutely bloody amazing conditions. Uh, hall frost again. Mm. Um, You're so unlucky so, uh, with that, aren't you? You're so I know, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's a right pain in the ass, isn't it? <clears throat> I can imagine. Um, but yeah, it, it was a it was a funny trip because you know Sam knows that area well, and um, you know you got you, you go to a sint really to sort of do a bit of hill walking and, and get up a few fells and shoot the sort of bigger bigger vistas. But um, the the weather that we had meant that that would have been totally the wrong call because sort of where we were staying in Lockin, just on the coast, it was pretty much wall to wall blue skies every day. But if you drove further inland, only about half an hour um it was absolutely socked in freezing fog every day and it didn't shift because there wasn't any wind so it just sat there so Mm. instead of all the sort of plans that we had for doing like i was going to get up cool and maybe do stack poly we basically shot four or five days of woodland which is not what you do in a sink normally to be honest but um but yeah great trip trip. i saw you there with greg whitten i saw some of his he got some lovely woodland shots didn't he yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, we ended up kind of shooting this kind of strip of um, road that went on for about maybe twenty miles, something like that. Hmm. And um, we all we were in sort of two groups of well, a group of three and a, and a group of two, and um, we all ended up kind of sh- covering the same area. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you've seen him shoot, I'll, I'll have sort of similar stuff. But yeah, um, but yeah, just absolutely tremendous and, and to be honest with you i was actually in a way quite pleased we had those conditions and and i mean would have took the snow if we'd had it obviously but uh in a way i was actually pleased that we had the hoar frost rather than the snow if you can you know if yeah. you can be picky hmm. um just because it's a bit different yeah uh, nice to see you sitting up by the way sam Thanks yeah for that. i'm Thanks trying to be nice and sensual this week Yes, well done, well done, and, and remember, <laughs> clear, nice, clear speech, so everyone can, you know, understand what you're saying. If that's yep. okay, yeah, yeah, we're a professional outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how's your how was your week, Sam? Yeah, well, this this week's been a bit frustrating for me because obviously I've been right in the snow, and of course, the photography gods as ever have brought the snow on the Monday and melted it. It'll be melted by tomorrow, I think. So. So I'm, I'm not going to get any shots in the snow. Um, but I had a really nice weekend. Uh, well, last weekend I had quite a nice hike um, just up the hill because my, my car's sort of out of action a bit at the moment. So I went on a hike up the hill uh, behind the house here um, and ended up just taking some intimate shots. And I'm getting quite into doing just intimate shots. I mean, it seemed a bit silly to go hiking up a hill just to do do intimate shots, but it was um, everything was frozen. So there were some really nice sort of frozen pools and things which work really well for that kind of thing so that's something i'm getting getting into quite a bit bit, bit at the moment um and then the other thing okay. is the week before that um i had a nice weekend down in glen Affick again um with funnily enough with, with ellis wood um so when we were recording the last podcast ellis was actually texting me saying do you want do you fancy coming down to, to glen Affick tomorrow morning um mm-hmm. and we had some really nice conditions down there so i had a nice it was it was properly frozen so again it was it wasn't snowy but it was really icy so again the road out to glen Affick, i don't think that gets gritted much because there's, there's only kind of a lodge down the end of it so parts of that were like an ice rink and but that road some of it is sort of is, is a bit of a drop off on the left hand side and it was a bit sketchy at times, um, but we were fine. But there were a few other cars, you know, we slipped a couple of times, but there were a few other cars struggling down there. But it was a really nice morning. And I actually uh, took the same photo I took of that tree in the autumn. I took the exact uh, same yeah, shot of it that. again, yeah. um, which I think turned out really nice because it, it had nice light on it. It looks like it's got hoar frost on it, but it's not. It's just dew. Um, on the branches which were catching the light so that that was that was good so yeah it's been been a good good couple of weeks um oh, excellent and, and that was ellis who agreed with me that he 
too much white in the bottom <laughs> right hand corner of his image in the comments if anyone wants to check the comments so I was actually correct on my critique how there, can so there be too much, much white it was snow there was too much but it was too much white and nothing in that bottom corner and he agreed with me and he took the photo so you know <laughs> it, it, it turns out I do know what I'm talking about sometimes not not really uh, what about you Jamie how was the snow for you <laughs> I'm just sitting here gutted with the stories that are being told of the snow and the ice and the hoarfrost and everything else. It's, yeah, I invited you to come up with me and share you, my cabin. Yeah, you did, but you only wanted me to bring some food because you couldn't get out. I did. Yeah. So now I've not been out at all. In fact, I've not been out since probably the beginning of December, if I'm honest. So, yeah, I'm yeah not been out at all. I had a day in lieu ready to use this week, holiday, um, if yeah. the snow had come because it, it you know, at some point in time, there was predictions <clears throat> that the snow was going to hit the Midlands and, and their area, but no, nah, it didn't materialise at all. We had nothing. Never did. We just had very cold nights and blue sky days, and that's about it. So, yeah, yeah. not been out. Yeah. Nothing exciting on my side, unfortunately. Did you stay, Darren, in the, in the same pods? Were you in the campsite that we stayed in yeah. when we went to the lakes? Yeah. Yeah. And it, you stayed in those pods? Yeah, I did. But, I, yeah. mate, I... I went there and, and he done me a really good deal because I had my tent. I was going to sleep in the tent, and uh, and it was like bitterly cold. And he said, "I'll have a like a, a pod." And I thought, "Oh, brilliant!" So they've got little heaters in there, but I mean, um, but obviously when we went, the temperatures weren't like the temperatures I had. So admittedly, I was in a pod, which was better than a tent. It had a heater, which, yeah. quite frankly, when you put the little red light on with the LED. I think the LED gave out more heat than the bloody heat of it. Because I slept in my socks, my down slippers, thermals, <laughs> pyjamas, layers, a down coat, hat and gloves, and I was still Jesus. sleeping bag and I was still freezing. Wow. I had egg, bacon, milk, a crate of beer, a, crate of, a pack of Coke in the van, all four doors got frozen shut for two days. I couldn't get into it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 reason, the reason I ask you about that is because Jamie said that when he we stayed in there together, didn't we, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Jamie said it was really noisy at night, but I didn't hear a thing. So I'm trying to work out what... Yeah, he said it. there was like a sort of weird... Oh, that, like, that really sort of, deep growling humming noise. Yeah, yeah, like, like, a, like, like a steam a train. Yeah, Like a steam yeah. train, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, funny enough, there was none of that. The campsite was beautifully <laughs> quiet. Yeah. Strange, That's that. just been you, Jamie. Yeah. That's just been you, mate. Well, we were next to some trees, so maybe it was an owl or something, I heard. Just, okay. a, just a gruff an owl. A gruff owl. Do you mean a boar? <laughs> yeah. A boar. <laughs> an owl with sinus problems. <laughs> 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 yeah one of them um well i can tell you about my week i've done nothing so anyway we'll move on um it's been i've been very quiet here uh oh well yeah no we won't talk about that um anyway let's move on to some comments uh from last week because the oh Stuart, actually saying that you weren't here two weeks ago uh your your picks um were very good well done for the uh competition <laughs> Uh, uh yeah so uh the one you, you the one you picked as a winner won didn't it yeah surprise mm -hmm. surprise think, yep yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think Stuart I mean, who, and who Sam, saw that coming Stuart mm. and Sam yeah. picked the winner didn't they yeah we both yeah. picked the same one yeah. as a winner yeah. yeah 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 but but yours was by accident Sam Stewart meant it but there were, I mean, I know, I know we've got going over old ground, but there were some absolutely fantastic photos. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about the, in the comments. Love, we had loads of lovely comments about the, about the competition from people who were genuinely happy that we picked their stuff. And a lot of people who looked through the, looked through the list of, you know, looked through the gallery and went, there's some amazing, you know, amazing work. Can't believe you whittled it down to five each. Um, uh, we had, uh, we had, we, we did have one though. Um, from someone, uh, Andrew Simpson, who said, um, as one of the trash not worthy of a mention, congratulations to what seems like everyone else who entered. I mean, the winners and those that got mentioned. I'm already scouting for a tree that might have some frost, mist and a swan to enter next year. Now, Andrew, I looked at your photos. I did check back through and looked at your photos and they were really good. 
But I've got to say there was a number of other people. There were there were a lot of people who didn't get mentioned, an awful lot. We had 150 photos, I think, and probably combined, even though we all picked five each, I'd say only about 20 got mentioned because there was some crossover. So there were an awful lot of people out there who put in some amazing photos that didn't even get a mention. And you certainly weren't trash. Um you know, and we didn't pick everyone else's, you know, just to spite you, honestly. Um, so go again next year. I'm looking forward to your lone tree with a mist in the mist uh, with some hoarfrost and swan. So good luck on that. But yeah. there I, were some fantastic ones. Um, I'll just have a quick shout out because I because because I actually know Andrew as well. It's like Andrew, I'll find you a swan in a tree. We'll we'll we'll, we'll sort it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, there was one, another comment I wanted to bring up from a guy called, I don't think this is his name, by the way, Kevin YouTube. I'm just <laughs> hazarding a guess <laughs> that his surname isn't YouTube. <laughs> just hazarding a guess. He says, great podcast. Anyway, he, he said, um, next time, maybe have a viewer's choice. So maybe that's something we could throw in next time. We could maybe get once every all the entries are in. We could maybe have a, a viewers vote that that yeah. has some mm-hmm. sort of value, like as a sixth judge mm-hmm. or a, no, good idea, a, a, an eighth judge, won't it? Mm-hmm. So maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll we'll factor all that in. We'll get Dave working on a poll and on the website and uh, doing his. See, that bit. was a so, nice yeah. so, positive comment. Well done, whoever yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, Kevin YouTube. Kevin uh, YouTube. Mr. YouTube. Well done, Kevin you. Mr. YouTube to you. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Um we also had this this is my favorite comment of the year. We've already <clears throat> kind of addressed this a little bit. This is from um uh Cumru RJW, which is I assume Wales RJW, um, you know, because I know the language, speak the lingua lingo. <laughs> he says, excellent competition photographs. The board in the bottom of the screen with the headphones on, <laughs> right? I think we all know who that is, don't we, Sam? Please stop mumbling and put yourself in the middle of the screen like the others. Be a bit more professional. Yes, yeah, Sam, be a bit more professional. <laughs> you're sacked. Ridiculous. You sloucher. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Be a bit more professional. <laughs> I'm sitting here with one foot up in a pair of pyjamas having a vape and drinking how, how professional is this i'm pretty sure we had one episode where someone fell off their chair as well at one stage so yeah. <laughs> we had one yeah, episode i'm sorry one of us pissed I... in, a, in a pint pot <laughs> while he was recording because he didn't want to get up to go to the toilet uh, <laughs> anyway yes yeah, sorry so sorry guys for, when people sorry guys for bringing the quality down <laughs> Yeah, it's shocking, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Shocking behaviour. You let, you've let yourself down. <laughs> let yourself. You let worse than that. You've let us mm, down. You have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even more than that, you've let the viewers down. Yeah, so we're sorry, very guys. sorry. Um, we, it won't happen again. If you yeah. notice, I hope you've noticed. He's sitting up. I'm straight. And his, uh, yes, his 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 yeah. vocals are a lot more clear yeah. this week as well. So. Enunciate, so, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, from from the, from the chest, from the you diaphragm, know, from, from the pit of your stomach, like oh, <laughs> like that, you'll be fine. Instead of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and then there's just one more one more comment that I just wanted to uh, pull up, which is from Ian Lewis Photography, and he talks about the competition and he's talking about social media and bits and pieces. But at the end of it, he says, "Are there any of the podcasts going to the photography show in March?" We are. So, we are. Yeah, I am. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, you, you coming? Are you coming, Stu? You're coming, aren't you? Uh, it's up in the air at the minute. I potentially will be doing like a talk thing. Um, oh. But I don't know if that's <laughs> happening or not. So mm. I might be, I might not be. Blimey. But I don't, okay. I don't know. Have you, do you know what day that might be on if it's possibly happening or? Not a clue. It's with oh. Kirsten. Okay. Right. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, if you can make it a Sunday, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, just have a word with them. Say I'm only available on the Sunday. Um, I think I think the plan is is that most of us are going there on the Sunday, aren't we? We're going to be there for the Sunday. Looks that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll yeah, be there. Looks yeah. That way. That's normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll all be there. I'll be wandering around, hoping someone recognises me. 
As well. Oh, now, now everybody Probably. knows that we're going. Do we need to hire some extra security? You know, I'm just, <laughs> no, I don't I'm think just, we need to worry. I'm just, you don't really. <laughs> no. Do we need to go in a disguise? I don't think we need to worry. False nose, glasses. <laughs> yeah. Big moustache. I think now we're, I think now we're, everyone knows we're going on the Sunday. The Friday, Saturday, and Monday are going to be really busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could all so get some T-shirts made up with a, a hand pointing that says, I'm with Gary Norman. We could just oh, stand yeah. around. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. There'll probably be several police officers doing that already, so I wouldn't worry too much. It would be fine. So, yeah, but but if you want to come and say hello to me and, and the other guys, you know, I mean, they'll be coming as well, but if you want to come and say hello to me, then then Sunday is the day. Sunday is the day that we'll all be there uh, faking it with our social media creator passes that mean we don't have to pay anything to get in. We're the thing is, he actually means that. He actually does want you to come and say hello to him. It's not just a, a joke. Oh, God, you yeah, know. definitely. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> it would make my day. Honestly, there was the, what, the, not the last time I went, but the time before. It might even have been the time before. I got approached by a couple and they were like, oh, you're Gary. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> Come and say hello. It was the best thing ever. It yeah, there's was, no more my, to that story. There's no more to that story. That was it. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, there is some more to that story. To be fair, uh, it was it was a, a girl called Becca and a, and her husband um, called Warren, and we we had a long chat, and then I arranged to meet Warren. Um, and I met him a couple of times, and after that, he's like, "Oh no, I don't really. Like, I think he's like, I don't really like you anymore. He hasn't organised anything since." <laughs> So, so once they got to know me, they're like, no, we're not, yeah, we're not so interested anymore. Um, but you know, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I can, I can handle it. But yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be lovely to, um, to say hello to any of you who are there. Have we got, have we, right. have we got anyway. eyes on anything that we want to eyes on the prize? Anything that we want to buy at the show? What we want to buy. I'd be lucky if I can get a hot dog. Their prices. <laughs> Do you remember how much they were last yeah, time? Of course like, I do. You quid. moaned Jesus. constantly for about a month after that. <laughs> <laughs> they were expensive. They was expensive. They're ridiculously expensive. That's about all I can afford. It's hard enough paying for the fucking parking. <laughs> and I don't even pay for it. I was going to say, I paid well. for that. <laughs> you paid yeah. for it. That was really hard for me to pay for that, Gary. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, but I I felt your pain, though. All right, heart. okay. Like, you know? So... <laughs> yeah no um no that you will Daz are you going for the six hundred no no F- I've, I've got F4? nothing I've got nothing that I um <laughs> that I want to get to be honest with you well there is but there's nothing nothing desperate so so when is the photography uh, show is it the seventeenth sort of, of mid- March March yeah right so the the week after <laughs> we'll all convene here and we'll discuss what Daz bought mm, yeah okay. and then I the week after today, we can talk TV. about how he sent it back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which ball head have you bought this time and sent yeah. back? Yeah. What have you returned mm. this week? Yeah. Oh, by the way, by the way, Jamie, I'm on, I'm on the, uh, on the Darren train now. Um, you know that you said that you've seen him all over Facebook selling loads of fishing gear. Mm. I get that now. Yeah. I saw the latest one. What was it? A sleeping bag. I think I saw a sleeping yeah, bag. Yeah, got that was sold a, today. So, yeah. Did it? There's the, a, the trouble know, a is, lovely... right? The thing is, I don't want people coming to the house, right? So I meet them outside the pub, but it looks like I'm doing a drug deal. I kind of walk up and I get in someone's car and they hand over a load of cash and I give them whatever it is. And I get out of the car and I just walk home again. <laughs> so, yeah. what, what was that thing you've got on Facebook? I think you probably sold it. It was like a, it was like a bag with like little fold down bits that stored other things in it. It's a I bait bag, wasn't it? Now. A ba- was it a bait bag? Was it a bait bag? Was it, was it a silver lining inside? No, I don't know what it... It, it had like a little fold out. Like you, you you unzipped it and it folded out and then you put other things in it, but I can't remember what oh, they were. was it rig boxes? It was, it, was it long? Yes, it, rig boxes, yeah. that yeah. was it. Yeah. I, 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 I shit you not, I don't, I don't have anything to do with fishing and I nearly bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> It looks so cool. I could just imagine like wandering off somewhere going, oh, let me just show you what I've got in this box. Like, let me just unzip this one. I don't even want it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anything else in the pipeline you're selling, Daz? Any, just so I can have a heads up. So I'm no, prepared. no, only, only more fishing gear. What it is, it's just that we used to go fishing, obviously, as a family of, of five. So I just ended up with so much, like five sleeping bags, five bed chairs, you know, three, three or four bivvies and all this kind yeah. of stuff, you know. So it's just, I'll, I'll, even though I've not personally fished for about 10 years, I'll keep on my own personal gear. But all of yeah. the other stuff, it's just it's just killing you know it's just so much space so i'm just kind of decluttering so to speak so well if any of you watching like fishing get on his facebook because honestly there's some stuff on there it's top quality it is top quality and you can also meet him in a dark alley somewhere where <laughs> he'll exchange the goods with you yeah. so what more can you ask for yeah anyway should we should we move on to a subject now you know since as we've been uh talking for 25 minutes about absolutely nothing um i think I think we'll start with this one, right? This is uh, a Jamie question. Um, it says, uh, "Does the more experienced and um, Jamie, this this doesn't make sense automatically, <laughs> does it? Stop having to take up my grammar. <laughs> it does make sense, doesn't it? That maybe it does. Does the more experienced yeah, yeah, and cool. proficient we get yeah. result comma. in us taking less photos each year? Yeah, you missed a comma round." Mm. I probably would have worded it differently. Okay, so well, I'm it, terribly yeah, sorry. Yeah. Next time I submit a topic, so, so, I'll send it for approval first before I uh, release it. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Off you go, go, Jamie. You can. You can. <clears throat> you can start on this one. Well, this is probably quite a self-indulgent topic, really, because uh, as I said earlier on, I haven't been out with the camera since the beginning of December, and. I have been out to try and scout some locations around here because as we've discussed on this podcast so many times where, where we live or where I live, um, you know, we haven't got the luxury of just nipping up the hill behind us like Sam and, and getting some, some quite uh, interesting shots, you know, that it's quite a struggle to find places to shoot. I've got home fan, I go there a lot, but I'd like to find other places. I've been out and I've just not been inspired at all to, um, to shoot anything what was at all. That, you fell know, out? that was my, my ear pod just what? fell out. <laughs> it's not my hearing aid just <laughs> fell out, was it? Well, I know, I know he's getting aid. a bit old. Just, <laughs> things are starting to fall off the man. Hang on, let me just tune it in a little bit. Oh, that's better. Yeah, we're working there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not I'm not getting out. I'm not taking shots and I'm not getting inspired to do so. So it got me thinking, look, you know, is this just me or is it because the more the more proficient we get, the more experience we get, the more critical we get of the shots that we take do we just take less shots because you know i remember when i started i was out all the time to every location i was t <laughs> i was taking shots of, of of mud banks that look like turds you know there's things that yeah, i was I taking that. shots of that i just did and i enjoyed it but now i don't i'll only go out if well not i'll only go out i'll only probably get my camera and take a shot if i feel the scene works or if i feel the conditions are right or so by the nature of that does it does the experience make us more fussy and does it we take less shots because of it? That was where I was going with it. And it, as I say, it's self-indulgent because I want you to say, yeah, you're right. You know, and, and you know, don't go out <laughs> when when uh, when the conditions are crap because you'll be wasting your time. And then my whole last, what, eight weeks will be fine and I won't feel guilty. Justify. Yeah, justify. Yeah. So yeah, that was the reason for it. Oh, I think I think we should ask Stuart. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my Well, in my own case, yeah, I would pretty much agree with all of that, I would say, to be honest. Uh, I think I think it's only natural that as, as you get more skilled and more experienced, you, you, you sort of, your focus narrows a little bit as to what you want to shoot. And the other thing as well is that the, the more experiences you have and the more you know the different types of conditions you shoot in the the bar for what's going to like you're saying get you inspired is gonna is gonna keep going up and up mm. uh i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think there's there's kind of this there's always this thing that people really want to push sometimes is you you, you know you you've just got to get out in all conditions and mm -hmm. and if, if you genuinely want to do that it's probably a different discussion if you genuinely want to do that and you enjoy doing that then great you know more, more power to you but I, i'm like like you jamie in that um it, it takes a lot for me to get inspired now um and it's just because you know experience tells you that you've seen 
so many different things and you know the potential of what things can be that you just get a little bit more more picky but it's not so much well I don't for myself anyway I don't try and sort of like beat myself up over it or anything I just sort of look at it as uh, a chance to just sort of put the camera down and, and just take a bit of a break but um, but yeah my from my own perspective definitely I I I don't really have much desire at all now to go out and shoot just, you know, flat grey misery skies and stuff like that. Cause I, I know, especially with, with doing it full time, it's, it's not an effective use of my time. If I'm going out specifically to do scouting and, and recce work, then that's obviously a different thing. And I will, obviously I do that, but if the goal is to go out and, and produce some decent quality photography and the conditions aren't quite right, then I'm quite happy to just, you know, put the camera down. Um, so yeah, from my own perspective, uh, I totally agree with you. I, um, I'm pretty fussy as well. Good. Okay. okay. Uh, what about you, Sam? What do you think on that? Yeah, very, very similar, really. Um, I find these days I take less photos, but actually I probably go out more, if that makes sense. Um, but so for example, for, for me, I, and I, I last year was a good example for me because I, don't think I did any photography really between April or early May up until um, late August, September. I just didn't, I went out and I would hike and I'd usually have a camera in the bag somewhere and I might take a couple of shots, which I didn't share with anyone. Um, but I just, you know, those, those, those shots which I was taking then weren't ones which excited me. So I just didn't feel the need to share them. Didn't, but I, I genuinely, you, you stop worrying about it. I think in the past I probably would have been more anxious about it, or thinking, oh well, if I've hiked all the way up here, I need to get some get some images. And now I just, I, 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 I I've lost that. Um, same goes for video as well. If I go out, even if I'm carrying all the video stuff, and 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 I don't get any video, I just, I don't, I don't. I don't even think about it. It doesn't bother me. Um, so I find I take less photos. Um, and in the past, I would have maybe thought I'd seen a photo somewhere and gone to try and take that photo. As now, I think I've become slightly better at realising when something just isn't worth putting the effort into taking a shot of. Um, it, not necessarily that it won't, that it would make a bad photograph, but more because it's not the sort of image which I want to take or the conditions aren't up my street. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I've become much more aware of the sort of images which I enjoy taking and the sorts of images which I like. And so now for me, I, 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 I don't go out of my way to take other photos. I'll still take other photos, but I won't necessarily share them. It's more, you know, it might be recce shots, which is just purely for, for the pleasure. And I might not even, you know, bother editing them. They might be sat on a, on a hard drive somewhere. But um, yeah, I've become far more selective now. Hmm. The exception hmm. would be... Wild, what about wild, you? Oh, I mean... No, go on. Just I was going to say the exception would, would be wildlife photography for me, which I don't do very much of these days. But if I ever do, I'm spraying and praying and end up coming home with thousands of shots so. and most of them are yeah, out of well, out of focus and rubbish so. <laughs> sounds familiar um Daz, what, what about you what do you think do you think along the, yeah, I think I mean, I'm, gonna I'm only really going to echo same, what we? what the guys have already said really I mean you know <clears throat> we, Jay was talking about kind of being inspired I think I think you've got to be inspired when you go out with the camera otherwise you're just you're just forcing it and um like when I was in the lakes for the couple of days, um, even though it was really nice for me to have um, like some snow, but it, it was just blue skies for two days. Um, and I kind of went out on the second morning um, and I was pretty much done by about 10 o'clock. Um, and then I kind of walked back to the campsite. And I think whereas perhaps three or four years ago, I would have been thinking, right, well, I've made this trip to the lakes. You know, I, I I have to get out all day until it's dark and and capture these shots. So I've got something. But then I just thought, you know, I don't really want to. That you know, it's, it's blue skies. I know it's it's a low winter sun, but even so, the sun was up. And um, yeah, I just thought, you know what, I'm quite happy with the the shots that I've got, and that was it. I just enjoyed 
the lakes then for what it was rather than panicking that I had to get a shot for, you know, for the hard drive. So, yeah, I think the more you do it, yeah. the more, you know, you're not running around like a chicken constantly, you know, looking for that photo. Mm. So essentially what we're saying mm. to you guys is if you're new at this, great but it does get worse. <laughs> and you just come to a point where you want to give up. <laughs> yeah. you know, so enjoy it while you've got it. Enjoy it while you it can. Doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't last for long. No, but yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good point, though. It is a good point. And I think, I think the thing is, is I would, I would sort of, I would, I would counter it by saying, well, yeah, but if you got to the lakes... You'd be out all the time, but the point is, is you then become familiar with the lakes, and it would just be the same again. So wherever you go, as soon as you become familiar with that area and you've taken the shots that you really want to get, you then start looking for, like you say, great conditions or something new. And it's it, it's almost like you know you're right. As as you become more proficient, you become more picky, and you become more selective about where you go and what you do. Which is why I always love doing something different. That's why I'm, you know, I'm I'm very much one of those people who's sort of very much. I want to try. I always want to do something new. Every so often, I get bored with what I'm doing, and I want to move on to something new. I think it's because you have that little initial sort of burst of almost like a, you know, in a new relationship, they have sort of that lustful like little period where you just want to do everything, and then you get used to it, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm bored with that now. So, <laughs> but um i didn't say that mm. but um that's why you do different that's why i do different things. that's why i've moved on to street for a while and then do a bit of wildlife and you know whatever but um yeah mm. it, it, it's not it's just natural it's a natural progression isn't it mm. you know unless you're unless you're a little bit you know like <laughs> obsessed <laughs> and you can't help yourself but that's a whole other <laughs> whole of a topic we're going to move into there so. well it's good therapy anyway so thanks for that it's made me feel a lot better um but uh yeah. i think there'll be in all seriousness i think you know we all seem pretty much aligned on it but i'm sure there'll be a lot of people and probably in the comments that don't have the same opinion and, and feel that we should be out more and we should be taking pictures of whatever we want to because it's photography and it makes us happy so just get out there and take shots and be happy um, absolutely. Well, do you know what, no, James? Absolutely. It, it, mm. Yeah, if, it'd be really mm. interesting actually oh, yeah. if you mm. if you do have that viewpoint and that experience. Then, please in the comments, mm. why why do you feel like that? What what is it that that you think makes you want to go out all the time to the same locations and the same places? Because that might that might kick something in Jamie and inspire <laughs> him to get off his ass and go out. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> just just to what Jamie's saying there. Just, I mean to. The flip side of what we're saying there, a good example is um, is Mark, who we had on the other week. I mean, mm. Mark is the is the opposite to what we're saying. I mean, Mark mm. genuinely loves just being out with the camera all mm. the time, and, mm. and that's what works for him. He would get withdrawal symptoms if he didn't do that. And if you look at any of his social media, he's not particularly picky about you know only showing his best work or whatever. Mm. He sees it very much as just a, a sort of diary of his photography and he'll take pictures of literally bloody anything down to his many pictures of his dog. Mm. Um, but that's the opposite. And, but that's what works for him. That's his balance. I think with what we're saying here, is you've just got to find your balance. It's a boring answer, but you've just got to find the balance for, for you really. Uh, yeah. One way or another. Yeah. Yeah, and point. to be fair with Mark, his, his rubbish photography is everyone else's great photography, <laughs> you know? So, so you know, oh, I don't know. He's took some ropey pictures of that dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it's a tricky one. It is a tricky one, and it's really weird actually because you know, sort of four out of five of us here don't go out and take photos anywhere near as much as we used to. Mm. I mean, Stuart, you you are. I guess you're probably the same that you don't take them as much as you used to. You're still pretty regular, mm. but um, yeah, you know, like I haven't, I haven't. I was looking back on my Flickr and I've taken about maybe 10 photos in the last nine months that I've put on there. Wow. So, so few, mm. you know, very, very low amount. So maybe we shouldn't call ourselves a photography podcast. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm an, it's the lakes obviously, but I'm back there next month. If anybody wants to join me, then you're, 
When? When are you going? I haven't got a date yet. Um, okay. I'm guessing it will be kind of, I don't know, the, the second, the second, or the the back end of February, something like that. Certainly won't be the, the beginning. So uh, let me know because I might do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's my daughter's <coughs> birthday on the twenty first. But is, is, is that an invite to the whole podcast viewers? Yeah, Dales, you need to be careful, or is it just for uh, for us? <laughs> you might get quite a few people turn up. And <laughs> I don't think anyone will turn up, even if I'm the postcode. <laughs> no, I I just want it to be incredibly cold and slippery, and and I'll pay for Gary to come. All expensive on me. If I if I could just witness yeah. Gary walking up a frozen road. Um, yeah. with me about 15 foot behind just giggling then that that would money well spent yeah can we go back down here yeah, that'd be great down king's hell again yeah oh <laughs> Re- really enjoyable I'll tell you what you. when, when i was at the top i mean some of you guys might know it i'm sure Stuart knows it well up up at stickle town you've got like a damn yeah, oh yeah i know that damn, i'm up there all the time a damn wall it's about two and a half foot high this wall um and for a long time i was the only person up there and I saw these two guys kind of coming up with a with a dog that was quite excitable. And the dog kind of ran up to me and barked and ran away again and ran up to me and barked. And, and they're shouting out, oh, he's fine. You know, there's no problems. Which he was. He was just a bit excited and all that. And all, all of a sudden, the dog just ran, jumped straight over the damn wall, which would have been into the tarn. But it was ice. So now the dog's just skidding along on the ice. <laughs> I panicked a bit and I've shouted to the guys. They've kind of come running up and then we're all three of us looking over this wall. And I'm just thinking, if that dog drops through mm. the ice, mm. oh, is that then it? what? Yeah. You know, because especially if it yeah. drops down and it's made a circle where it can't physically yeah. get out or anything. Mm. Mm. And I literally just ducked down behind the wall because I thought, well, perhaps if the dog sees me and he might not come back to the owner and the owner managed to get him out. But I thought, and after that, Put him straight on the lead. Mm, I thought, yeah. crikey, that could have been that could have been some serious problems there for that dog mm, and for that yeah. dog's owner if it had gone through the ice. Mm, yeah, uh, it's just a dog, though. <laughs> you can't say Not that. Not a dog lover. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. No. I didn't mean that. It's just a dog. Though. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if a dog if it jumps over there and gets into trouble, it's its own fault. It shouldn't have jumped over there, should it? Yeah, I don't think you can yeah. tell it that though. But anyway, well, yeah, well, that's why it's just a dog. Because if it had intelligence, if it was like a human, it wouldn't do it. Although some would. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now because I've alienated loads yep. of dog owners, and I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally only joking about that. I, I just want to say, I just wanted to really quickly say at this point. Do you remember two weeks ago I was saying, "Oh yeah, Peterborough with me, Peterborough." glass do you remember that and i put it yeah i put it in the dishwasher that night it broke <laughs> it smashed that night so now i'm on a corona extra glass which will probably smash tonight now i've shown everyone so um you're so, in a good mood aren't you <laughs> i'm all right you know, seem like I'm, might seem like I'm not in a good mood but i'm, I'm all right i'm i'm just uh yeah my, yeah yeah anyway yeah we'll we'll, we'll We'll leave it at that and just say, yeah, I'm in, I'm in a good mood. Now, look, we got an awful lot of photography subjects here for, for four non-photographers, <laughs> not as it is nowadays, you know, who haven't been out anywhere. Would you, Before we... Why are you what? including me in that? Yeah, well, 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 yeah, but I haven't seen a photograph from you for ages, Daz. Have you not? No. Well, I've been out. Well, I'll just come back. I'll just come back from the lakes. <laughs> so you literally just said I'd come back, and I only went out for a little while and hardly took any photos. Yeah, but what I got, mate, was was superb. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, fair enough. Three non photographers then. But are Sam's we happy to carry on? <laughs> yeah, but Sam went out the other day. Got a cracking photo with that tree. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just, can, just, you just, just, can you just whittle it down to? <laughs> Four just, photographers just, yeah. and one non-photographer. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't be like that about Jamie. I'm not taking that on <laughs> no. myself. Either. There is I'm factual at the moment, yeah. though. <laughs> I tell you what, Jamie. I tell you what. How about and Daz? Because you're in. You're. You know. You're there. Why don't we go out somewhere? Why don't we go? Yeah. Why don't we go to Home Fen or something? Yeah, I'll be fussy on the conditions yeah. though. <laughs> no, we'll just go. <laughs> Let's just go. We'll just go and. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll be up for that. We'll, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. 
okay, let's just do that and we'll go and then we'll find a little pub somewhere afterwards or maybe before and during if you want. <laughs> just go and have a drink. Hmm? But let's do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah? All right. Okay, Done. all right. We'll, we'll, we'll sort out a date and then if anyone wants to join us, you know, come and say hello, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get that arranged. Yeah, we well. drop what three words um, just for Gary. Yeah, yeah, what three words? Yeah, Gary needs friends. <laughs> um, <coughs> anyway, now look, all I've got here, literally all I've got here are photography subjects. So t- do we want to go with another photography subject? Well, that's all we've got, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll just, <laughs> Daz, I'm waiting for you because you're like, you're the you're the master of an off-the-cuff subject. Right, I thought okay. you might throw one in. And... Oh, yeah. Well, I'll have a little think while you're talking Okay, you yourself. have a think while we do the next photography subject. Right, okay. okay. Um, right. Okay. Uh, how about... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> how how about this one then? This was from you, Daz. It says, what will the next generation of landscape photographers stroke gear look like? Phones, drones, less of it, question mark. Yeah, I suppose I was just thinking really that, you know, I mean, it's it seems to be, you know, photography, landscape photography, I should say, does seem to be more of a kind of middle age pursuit. You know, I mean, I know obviously um, Stuart's younger yeah. than us, and especially yeah, Sam. I'm, I'm not far off. <laughs> but, you know, but when you when you look at most photographers, you know, it's it is almost like a certain age, really, a certain vintage. Um, yeah. But you know, kind of when I was when I was growing up, you know, um, you know, we didn't have mobile phones with with cameras on. You know, didn't even have a fax machine when I was growing up. So, um, but I'm just thinking now. You know where 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 the kids are kind of brought up with their phones and stuff, and I'm just wondering, you know, kind of what it will look like, you know, in twenty twenty years time. Will there still be the same passion to own a camera? Um, because you know, certainly me as a kid, you know, you kind of went through buying different cameras, you know, and and looking at different cameras, and you know, but now it just seems to be all phones. Daz, before we go any further, can I just push you a bit more on the fax machine? Yes. Did you did you at any point go, oh, I wish we had a fax machine? I was very envious of people that did have fax machines. <laughs> do you know, do you know Dolly Parton still uses a fax machine? <laughs> no. no. Does she? Is, there, is this a joke? No, no, no. Is it going to be something no, around no, nine no, to no. five? Or no, honestly. Only between nine to five. Miley or? Cyrus. I was watching an interview with Miley Cyrus. I think it was Joe Rogan. <laughs> Why? Why? With Joe Rogan. And she was saying that she has to... Oh, I listened to that. Did you? She has to communicate with Dolly yeah. via a fax machine. Right. right. <clears throat> I used to have a fax machine. Right. Oh, don't tell Daz, Sam. Yeah. He'll get really upset. No, I used to have a fax machine, yeah. I'm afraid, Daz. Did you? I had one one other friend who had a fax machine, and we used to we faxed each other stuff. <laughs> what did you fax each other? Hello, call Sh- me. <laughs> Hello, Sean. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this this was pre MSN <laughs> Messenger, so you know. Clearly. <laughs> right. Okay. Now we got the fax machine out of the way. Um, what were you saying, Daz? I've forgotten. Because <laughs> I was just focusing. You was. Like, literally, I, I, was I could see. I, as machine. I was talking, I thought, Gary's dying to jump in here with something. <laughs> He's not listening to a word I'm saying. So, yeah. No, so, what do you I think? Listen, what yeah. do you think, you know, in 20 years' time, do you, do you think landscape photography will still be as big as it is now? And it's not particularly big now, let's face it. So, do you think it will be... Do you think it's dying out? Do you think it will just evolve? Do you think it will just change? I don't know. Do you know? I think I think landscape photography, let's say, thirty years ago, was the realm of of the of the rich guy who could afford uh, an SLR camera and to have it process like a dark room to process everything. 
and it was it was a real it was a real niche yeah, real, subject, thing, yeah. a real niche hobby back then. And then DS Digital came about, and then that made it accessible to lots more people. And I think that that took a little while to catch on because you know digital cameras were a thing, like digital point and clicks were a thing, but maybe digital SLRs were still pricey and out of the range of of a lot of people. But then when phones came in, everyone then suddenly became a photographer, didn't they? As soon as there was a, a mobile phone that, that had a decent camera on it, everyone is now a photographer. Mm-hmm. So where anyone goes to a to a let's say a honeypot location, you're going to see that on Instagram. Now it's not the same, I don't think, as as landscape photography. I still think landscape photography is more niche than that. It's more specialized than that because it seems to be that maybe it's because we're a little bit a little bit precious over it but it seems to be you can't really do landscape photography with a phone it's got to be with a a proper big camera but whether that will then whether in 20 years time that will still be will there still be cameras will there still be specialist cameras in 20 years time that's the question i guess or will 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 they die out and then will it become very niche again and almost like sort of vinyl is these days, you know, like people. That's the, that's the know, way I see it. And I'll tell you as well, you I'm know. thinking, you know, are people going to start to, like, say, say, I mean, I do it now, but that's, that's different. But like, say, 20 years ago, you would see a, a photo, um, obviously from a, from a photographer, you just think, oh, you know, what, a, what a cracking photo that is, you know, and you'd, you'd appreciate it for what it is. And you think, oh, the guy that took that, you know, what a great photographer now with phones and, and AI and all of that is everyone just going to get so distrustful of appreciating a good photo because I must admit, I do it now. I will look on a photo and straight away I think, Oh, that's a cracking photo. And then I think, is that real? Hang on. Has that mm, been yeah. manipulated? And I'll yeah. start to question yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? And I'll start to, yeah. whereas before I would have just think amazing. So as you're saying, Gal, is it going to kind of go out to the masses so much that it, it then just becomes, uh, you know, a kind of a niche hobby, as you said, like mm. vinyl? Mm. Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you guys? I mean, Stuart, you're, I mean, and I keep coming to you, but you're you're the professional here. You, what what do you think? Where do you see yourself in, say, ten years' time? Do you still see yourself doing the same things you're doing now? I bloody hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I agree with Daz in that I, th- I think the vinyl reference is a, is, is a really good one. It, I think it is going to niche down even more and um, you'll, you'll see a lot more of that. I, th- I think, I mean, the what you were saying, Gary, about, you know, access to equipment and all of that sort of stuff, I mean, Probably a wider discussion, but photography, in my opinion, anyway, it's it's massively built on a framework of technical. Do you know what I mean? It's a technical exercise, and for mm. like you're saying, there for, for years and years, you had to have resources and and enough money to buy those technical pieces of equipment to actually yeah. do the thing in the first place. So, and now that's all gone. I think um, I think more for, from the gear perspective. I think I mean I don't know how it's going to play out with with people taking pictures but from the from the brand's perspective i do think they're going to have to at some point start to embrace more of what you're seeing in phones and in cameras because a newer generation are coming up behind you expect to be able to pick up a camera now and and it to act like a phone or have a lot of the functionality in a phone i do wonder when you look at you look at the the sort of legacy brands like nikon canon uh, I won't include Sony in that, but those two in particular, I do wonder whether they deliberately hold back a lot of that tech in their cameras to almost hang on to, mm. you know, this this thing that we've got now, you know what I mean? Because it is an ageing uh, audience base that are doing this. And, uh, you know, you can't tell me that a lot of this tech that's in phones couldn't be integrated into cameras now. I mean, a good example of this is that... Um, DJI Pocket 3 that I'm doing this webcam on now. In, um, it's video, but it's the same principle in that this thing, I mean, it's got a one-inch sensor in it. And the 
quality out of it is absolutely amazing. And it's basically yeah. point and shoot for video. Mm. Yeah. This, I think this thing here, I mean, you're seeing all loads of vloggers picking these things up now. It's going to virtually obliterate a lot of vlogging cameras because it's doing everything that the vlogging camera needs to do in a tiny form factor. At some point, the bigger cameras, I think, are going to have to start to em embrace some of that. Otherwise, it, it'll kind of just die a death because the kind of technical exercise that photography has been for so long, I don't think it is that anymore. And no. those brands are going to have to adapt, I think, a little bit. Um, but in 10 years, Christ, I, I mean, from my own perspective, I think whatever you're taking pictures with, I think there's for where I'm based in the Lake District in a sort of tourist town and everything, I, I think people are still going to want pictures, whatever they're taking on. So, you know, finger, fingers crossed I'm still in a job. <laughs> so when you, when you go up, when you take <clears throat> clients on a workshop, Stu, mm. what do you say their age ranges is? Uh, it's nearly always 50 plus. That's um, my... I, I can count, yeah, I can count on one hand how many, well, maybe not one hand, but... I'd say percentage wise, it's probably 90, 95% of it. Yeah. Um, there's a small proportion that are under 40, um, certainly not under 30, I would say, but yeah, 45, 50 plus 95% of the time. I would yeah. say though, Daz, I don't, I don't think that's a thing in terms of it being a, a, like a, a 2020 thing, like people are doing it, at 50 plus at 2020 and they won't be doing it at 50 plus at 2030 2040 no 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 that was actually going to be my you question get, i wonder what yeah. yeah no i'm not assuming i that. think you as you you <clears> get into this type of thing as you get older so i still think that in 50 years time the 20 the, the 50 year olds then will be doing this type of thing mm. that they wouldn't be doing at 40 30 20 I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's an age thing, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that there'll always be a need or a requirement to have in the market a what we class as a professional camera. So, uh, you know, a, a full D, uh, DSLR with all of the, the the ability to be able to adapt it to to use the skills of a photographer, because I think you know. Cameras, uh, sorry, phones are more accessible than they've ever been, and we'll, we'll obviously we'll continue to do that. But I think there's an acceptance. You know, I'm a member of loads of Facebook groups, as I'm sure we all are, and it's interesting when you see, you know, a lot of people post pictures on these Facebook groups and they say, "Oh, it's with my, it's with my phone. If I only had a big camera or a proper camera, I could get a much better shot." A shot, and I think there's a, there's a general acceptance that there's a difference between a phone shot and a what they, you know, general people class as a professional camera. In our world, it's a, you know, it's a modern mirrorless camera. So I think that the market will always exist for that because there's an acceptance that phone cameras, you will never get what you can get on a on a full fled, uh, full frame uh, mirrorless camera. We can get on a phone camera. So the market will stay as it is because there's a demand for it. And generally, even young people will acknowledge that if they want to be a photographer then they need to buy a proper camera rather than have a, a phone that can do everything. There's a there's a distinct difference between the two. Mm. So I think the market's there. The market's there. The there is at the moment, but, I mean, you think how fast <clears throat> yeah. camera, camera phones have come on in 10 years. Yeah. In, yeah. in 10, 15 years' time, you know, crikey, them cameras, that, you know, them phone cameras could be... Yeah. Yeah, but I think what, what I'm saying is I think the manufacturers, you know, as, as Stu was saying, the Nikons and the Canons of this world, they're going to want to keep that market as a as a niche professional market. So if you want to take, you know, photographs to, to get the best from them as a skilled photographer, you're going to need this type of camera. A phone can get you everything. It can, it can create AI. It can do all the processing you like to do to make a lovely scene. But they're set in a stall that the... To get a professional picture, you need a you need one of these cameras, and therefore they'll probably keep that market there to attract people to still invest in a proper camera rather than a phone. My view, I think oh, you're right. Well, I was going to say though, that's all. That's all supposing that things stay as like does saying is stay as they are. I mean, if Apple, you know, iPhones for example. I mean, Apple. I've often wondered why they don't go into doing you know mirrorless cameras or whatever they, they don't need to it's a tiny market they're already doing it with a phone that's not to say they might start sticking a, a four-third sensor or a APS-C size sensor in a phone. i mean there's there's a lot of 
sort of practical things to get around there with the design of a form. But if they start putting a, I mean, in the 50, I don't know what the size is now, but the, the I think the 15 is nearly near enough a one inch sensor in the main camera. I mean, that's getting on for, mm. you know, if you gave me that 15 pro and said, right, Stu, for a month, all you can do is use that camera. I could get some, I'd like to think anyway, I could get some pretty decent results out of it. Mm. Regardless, mm. who's to say that in five five years' time they're not sticking bigger sensors in the phones, and then then it becomes a completely <clears throat> but it's still a phone discussion. Mm. Yeah, but I, I can listen. I can tell you yeah, now, but, Stuart. I, I can tell well, you now. I've got a fifteen. Yeah, I've got a fifteen Pro. If I gave you my fifteen Pro, and you went up and took some shots, I honestly think you're getting to a point where you're going to start to struggle to tell which one is your DSLR. Yeah. And which yeah. one is your iPhone? Because it's it's that good now. Mm. Yeah, it's, I agree. The, the, it, that, it is that good now, and it has its limitations. Yes, it has its limitations. And and if you shot in low light or you shot in anything but good conditions, you're going to notice. But if you go and shoot in decent light and you put the two together, you're going to struggle to tell the difference. And I think that going back to your conversation or your point, Jamie, about uh, Canon and, and, and Nikon, I think they are being quite shrewd because there's a lot of snobbery about photography. There's a lot of sn- you can't, you know, a, lo- a lot of people go, oh yeah, but that's a phone shot and this is a cam. They're holding on to the camera thing because they know that people will buy a camera mm-hmm. simply for the fact that it's a camera. Yeah, yeah. they can say, I've got a camera, mm-hmm. I've got a professional yeah. camera. Mm-hmm. But I think that the, the, like Daz says, I think the day is coming. And it, I don't think it's. I don't even think it's ten years off. I think it's less than. 10 I don't years think off it's far away. When mm. yeah, when when yeah. you're going to be able to replicate everything you can do on a DSLR on a phone. I well, really a do, key, with, computationally. A, a key point to this though is that we're the last generation that are going to have this discussion. Mm. The generation behind yeah. us yeah. have grown up using smartphones that are really good. Yeah. We've we've got that direct comparison, but the generation behind us are going to be. Mm can do all that with a phone now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's yeah. it's a different discussion for the people coming up behind us, I think. Mm. Yeah. Because I think, you know, when when different. we was younger, it, you know, if we want to take a photo, we had to buy a camera. That that was it. Yeah. There was yeah. no mm. other option. That's yeah. gone. Mm. You know, and mm. then we all owned ca- we all owned cameras and then we started buying mobile phones that slowly developed their their camera. But yeah. now, as she was saying, if you're brought up with a really good quality uh, camera on your phone, what will make you even want to buy a camera? If you'd never owned one before, what what's going to make you want to drop a yeah, thousand, two thousand pound on a camera or on a yeah. on a camera when you've got a perfectly good one on your phone? Mm. The only thing I would say is is if you're talking wildlife of that type of sports events, that yeah, type of Yeah, but again, thing, that's a very... You can't replicate yeah. that focal it's length. It's a niche that's thing, That's a though, very isn't it? niche. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Sam, what about you? I mean, you're, you're basically a child. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I... <laughs> Stop slouching. Still, <laughs> still, still, I'm, I'm still pretty much... <laughs> I should be wearing my little my little my little sailor suit, really, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with what's you. <laughs> I I agree with what's been what's been said already. What what I the way I see it going is, I think it's the camera market is going to become steadily more polarized because I think we're already at a stage where phones are as good as your basic and mid range um, digital DSLRs. We're already at that stage, mm. which means I think for camera companies, yeah. those that those ranges aren't going to generate from income because there isn't going to be any benefit of buying those over using a phone, um, which then means that their higher end cameras will become more expensive, I guess, because they'll need to try and recoup their costs. I think there will always be a, certainly within the next 15 years, there'll be a need for professional high end DSLRs um whether that's medium format or or, or or larger because we have to remember landscape photography is still a very niche category of photography and there's still a need to get sports photography uh, professional photography for fashion all of that sort of thing so there'll always be a need in the market for professional cameras but i think that they'll be more expensive 
simply because the camera companies won't be able to make as much money from selling their low, lower range entry DSLRs because people will just use their phones. Um, the flip side of that is I think that, as Darren was saying right at the start, I think there's going to be a real push. I think, again, this has already happened. There's a real push for authenticity, and especially with, with AI growing, um, people more and more and more are going to have an appreciation for analog photography. Um, and you're already seeing the price of film. So analog photography is already having a big boom. The price of film is, is, is shooting up and the price of those cameras is shooting up. And it's something which is already holding a lot of appeal for me as well. And I, I'm i very keen, actually, hopefully this year at some stage to, to try and um, dabble in a little bit of medium format analog photography just be just because it's something which I'd, I would like to have a go at and I think more and more people will probably turn that way as well um, as things become more sterile so that's how, sort of where I see it going in the next 15 years and and it, it wouldn't surprise me if we see it if we see a boost of that analog in the same way as we saw with vinyl um, because people just want something something real as, a, as a, to sort of counteract all of the artificial and heavily processed stuff which is out there mm. Mm. Well, it, 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 the other thing is is you can absolutely guarantee authenticity if it's on film you know and that's going to be a big thing for people i think for people going forward is like you said daz is this real or is this fake you know is it a real photo whereas if you if it's taken on film you know it's real you know that and, and people will that that will have value at some point in the future definitely i mean never or have never a youtube so, channel sorry mate well, mm. yeah. yeah yeah yes that's very yeah, true a youtube channel yeah, yeah very or true YouTube, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> because then you can prove that you were there taking that yeah. unicorn yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Ne i mean never never say never but i can never see me <laughs> ever shoot in film i've got no interest whatsoever and the, and the and the few youtube channels that i watch occasionally with someone shoots film they always just seem so stressed <laughs> oh i've only got like three more shots off <laughs> met one up oh no and i'm just thinking why did you do it why have you just carted all that stuff up to the side of a mountain and now you're fretting that you've only got three shots left and you've overexposed oh. and you forgot to and I'm just thinking, and I'm getting stressed on their behalf. <laughs> on that subject, right, on that subject, really quickly, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. But do you remember there was a thing about, I don't know, a few years back with YouTubers where they used to go, I'm going to go up this, I'm going to go up this mountain and I'm only going to take one shot. I'm going to take, I'm going to take one shot. That was me. And that's it. And was that, that you? That was me. I'm like, why? <laughs> why are you only going to take one shot? What is wrong with you? You've got a digital camera for a reason. Take as many as you want, <laughs> Gary. I've got to say, oh, I'm like, still to this because that was pretty. That was pretty early in my in my photography thing, and I would say it's one of the most valuable <laughs> photography trips I've ever had because it was. It taught yeah. me to take your time, think about your composition, get there early, don't stress, don't rush around, and it was one of the most important things i've ever done because that's that ever since then has, always, has been in the back of my mind before the photography i've done since so yeah well that's great sam but don't have to share it with us <laughs> <laughs> that's just a joke that's just a joke no i'm, I'm sure it was very useful I'm, i feel bad <laughs> i just i'm just having a few more beers i'm sorry you're on a where roll were tonight, we right? where were we what were we saying i can't remember i've forgotten well i think we i think we we come to the end of that, that subject with us all yeah. agreeing oh th there was one other thing i was going to say actually on the subject which was about um camera manufacturers it and, and i don't know if th this has any bearing on it but if you notice i'd say for the last five years probably Canon, Nikon, Sony, they don't talk about photography anymore. They talk about video in their cameras. Mm -hmm. It's all about the video capabilities yeah. rather than mm. the, rather than, the, the, you know, it used to be, <laughs> oh, X megapixels, this, that, and the other. It's now, it can shoot this video, it can shoot that video, it can do that. So I wonder whether we've almost reached a, we've hit an apex. Yeah. yeah, we've reached an apex on photography anyway. You're not going to, there's only so far you can get with a, with a camera. 
it can only do so much. And I wonder if we've reached that. So now they've got to find other marketing tools to sell that camera. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the the last big kind of thing to do with um, photography that I can possibly think of, apart from just like more megapixels, was, was Pro Capture. I mean, that for me was, was yeah. fantastic. You know, that was a real breakthrough Amazing. when it yeah. comes to photography. But prior to that, I can't think of anything else that's come out in the last kind of 10 years, perhaps, that's been absolutely groundbreaking. And, you know. I think what has come out now and it's become more more um, uh, used as photographers, as Stu will say, is the drones, isn't it? I think drones are being used a lot more yeah. as photograph by photographers mm. now, and I think there is a lot more mm. mileage to go in in upgrades for for drone technology. You know, yeah. if they're getting bigger sensors and uh, the ability to take a lot better quality image, you know, I think that's that's a market that's still got a lot of value in it to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you worry with drones though that <clears throat> that they're going to be they're going to be regulated. They're going to be so regulated. It's coming that that they're going to be so regulated. They're going to become a very niche thing. You're going to have to jump through a lot of ho uh, hoops to get to be able to use the drone because you know the drones you're talking about with the advances. They're the big. They're the bigger drones. They're not the the small minis. They're the, the one. And you've already got to register <clears throat> and go on a course and pay a lot of money. And you can only fly them in certain areas. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to become more and more regulated as we go along because I think people are mm. people are scared of drones. I, I think you might be right, but I'd like to look at the numbers actually of drone sales because I'm not too sure that it has been massively a, a massive increase over the last kind of year or two. I think perhaps, I and I'm only guessing now, so you know this is just, but you know perhaps three or four years ago there was a big upsurge in, in, in drones. Everyone was talking about drones and getting drones. I don't know. I don't tend to hear them. I mean, they have got quieter, admittedly, but, you know, I don't tend to hear them as much when I'm in the lakes as I did two or three years ago. I don't see them as much now. So I, I just wondered if that had, that phase has almost plateaued a little bit. And um, it, If you look at America, most of the national parks have banned drones. And I wonder if we're heading that way. I wonder because I got a feeling there's there's a I got a feeling that the, the general public don't like drones. They have a fear of drones, and you know what you know what politics is like. That you know if if it's a if it's a good sell, you know they'll they'll push. You know I wouldn't be surprised to see drones certain drones outlawed and to be and to have real sort of uh, draconian you know laws on you've got to do this to get a drone you've got to do this to get a drone you've got to have a you know you've got to have a mm. crb check to get a drone i can just see that coming i can i'll keep you up as no i was i was on the edge of my seat <laughs> sorry <go laughs> <All right. laughs> i could just see i could just see that coming i i I, mm. I just feel with drones i can see that coming i could be wrong but and and i, I hate it to be like that because i think that drones are fantastic and i think that I think drone photography could be the next big mm. sort of undiscovered area, mm. you know? That's the only reason I would buy a drone is for the photography. I've said, I've said on the last podcast, I think, I am kind of quite envious sometimes when I see some amazing drone shots and I just think, oh, you know. Mm. But having said that, again, it's like, you know, I'm getting older now, how much more weight can I carry? Mm. Well, I lost some of my belly, I'd be all right, wouldn't I? Yeah, but you know, look what yeah. as Stu just said, the technology they've now got in the, the latest pocket three, and it's only a tiny little thing, you know, that yeah. goes in a drone, yeah. one inch sensor. It, the tech can easily go into a drone, can't it? And it's not going to yeah. increase the size dramatically. Well, it, it's already there. It's mm. already there. Yeah. I mean the the, Ma the Mavic three Pro or the Mavic Three series are all four thirds on the main camera. It's not going to be that much of a step up to put an APS C sensor in the next one. Mm. And then you're really into some serious yeah. kit at that point. Yeah. I mean, the, the one I've got, that Air 3, it's a one-inch sensor, but it's got two cameras on it, so you've got a tele-lens that's going to produce one-inch sensor quality, which is, is pretty good, to be honest. Mm. You put an APS-C size sensor in a drone with two two lenses, I mean, that's mm. you, you can, yeah. you can yeah. do some serious work with mm. that. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I'm going to put my hands up now and say I think that's the most highbrow conversation we've ever had. 
<laughs> Seriously. Oh, great. That was yeah. that was probably 25, 30 minutes of absolute Should we should we yeah. end the whole season on this conversation? Yeah, we, 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 we're we could, not gonna beat we could it. really. We could just retire no. on this. Yeah. We could we could genuinely stop. <laughs> we should, now. We should charge more, shouldn't we, for this? Yeah, this we is should, proper yeah. proper content, yeah. this. Yeah. I mean that yeah, mm. that that is chargeable. Mm. Pay the rest wallet. of the stuff we've done is absolute shit, but that mm. that bit there is chargeable content mm. right there. Members so I hope you know what yeah. you're getting, people, for free, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's without Adam and Dave. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. imagine they were on here. I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh dear. Anyway, Daz, have you thought of a of a topic like an off the wall topic? Oh, yeah. Please tell me you've thought of an off the wall topic. <laughs> No, not really. No, not. I did think. I did think of one actually. Then I thought, no, I'm, I've not what, had enough beers to share that. It's. It, what was it? No, well, don't put it. But it's somewhere in between. I'm going to. It's somewhere in between a, a very mild kind of embarrassing story. I can't remember where I think I drilled a hole in the bath, and then the extreme one where I made. It, it falls. It falls somewhere. It falls somewhere. <laughs> It falls somewhere in the middle of those two. Actually. <laughs> You've already had to cut that out once of a video, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Stuart and Sam, I don't think you ever had the pleasure of hearing that story. No, I have um, not. I... No. <laughs> no. No. No? I feel like this episode has suddenly yeah. gone down the road of salt burn. <laughs> it was so highbrow. It was so highbrow. It was going so well. Um, so, yeah, so perhaps um, I, I will save that story that I wasn't saying for another day. But so, yeah, yeah, so, uh, offline, offline, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I won't put that bit in. Um, but you've got well, you nothing, can you though. can put that bit in because I just, just cover my mouth. Yeah, just cut that bit where he has you when you can hear him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, right. You've so, done an hour there anyway, haven't you? No problem. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Alexa? Alex. Yeah. Um. Okay. No, I, I think I think we, we need one more, just just one more, one more topic. If we've got it, so I can I can well, go back to phone weather apps. When you're not going to do weather apps? Oh yeah, weather that's apps, good. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, right. Hang on. So let's move on because Daz has got nothing. I'm I'm very disappointed, Daz. <laughs> I was waiting for a, an off-topic thing, but this is going to be real photography heavy. So. And I know you've just had a very expensive highbrow bit, but, um, you know, I'm sorry. Um, so, Daz, you wanted to talk about weather apps, didn't you? Not really. I, I just wanted to know good. what you used. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> this, now, I was going to, I was going to, I had a bit of a, a thing with this, a bit of a think about this. And I think for most people, weather apps probably aren't as crucial but for people like dave is unfortunately not here and, and probably um stuart as well they are a lot more important yeah. because the, oh, the yeah. mountain weather is is totally different often i and you sam yeah. sorry because yeah. obviously you're i'm, at, I'm still here as well yeah. the mountain weather is <laughs> yeah sorry sam <laughs> So you've got some apologies Sorry. to do at the end of this. Okay. I'm even yeah. being professional this I week. I know, I'm going to have to say... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's even been sat up and everything and I didn't notice he was there. Um, the, but the mountain weather is is far more tricky to... to you know, it's far more specialised, isn't it? Than, than the, I mean, I, I basically use BBC weather. That's what I was getting to. Really? Do you? Yeah. Well, I don't, well, Just use that? Look, well, yeah. I mean... Yeah. It, what's the weather like today? Sunny. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Actually, recently, what's the weather like today? Sunny. I'm not going out. What's the weather like today? It's grey. Still not going out. It's not, it's not going out. Sometimes you use clear outside, but that clear outside is the most, I mean, come on. Clear outside is either nothing's going on or it's foggy for the rest of the millennium. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it though? I, you, just, you can't trust it anyway. I, I don't know. I, clear outside is probably the only one that, from a fog perspective anyway, that is generally all right. Clear outside clear outside will go nothing, a hundred for the rest yeah, of time. it's a glitch. And then it resets itself and tells yeah. you what it's going to be like. To nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. 
Yeah. There was a, there's a new one Sorry, that I, I noticed on some Facebook group the other day. Somebody was talking about Viewfinder. You've heard of that. you come across that. Viewfinder. It's a dedicated app for weather. For... I'll have to look into it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, oh, so... I know that app. <laughs> it's, 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 it's... That's not a weather app, though. I like uh, it. Is it I not? Like it's, it. it's for photographers, I though, like isn't it? it? You're not no, getting. I, I know what it is. You're not getting it's confused a... with View Ranger, folks. There was one which was no. View Ranger. No, it's Viewfinder. No, I... it's, the, the, there's no. The, it's Viewfinder, and then it's DR I... at the end. The Viewfinder. If it's the same thing, I think it is. It, Doctor it's... Viewfinder. <laughs> <laughs> Give up, Stu. <laughs> He's in one of those moods. I know. <laughs> it's um, yeah. it's it's one it's it's one I put Dave onto where it, it all it does is it like it it's got a load of settings that you can plug in using your camera and your phone and it'll give you like a, a sort of visual representation of what the perspective is at a different focal length so uh, oh. you can plug into that app what a full frame camera is going to look like that? Sorry, that was my doorbell going off. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you you can plug you can put your camera at a given scene, your phone camera at a given scene, and plug in what that scene looks like at four hundred mil on a thirty five millimeter well, full frame. The camera. one I'm looking at, it's viewfinder, and it says photo weather alert. So you set alerts. Oh, that's not it. Set then. alerts for different <laughs> totally weather conditions. Different. Yeah, so it's, it's totally different app. <laughs> it's on the App Store and Google Play. It's View Viewfinder, but they just they've lost the E, so it's Viewfinder without the E in between, oh, right. and that's it. But it's, you... oh, I hate it when they do that. <laughs> Don't you like Grinder? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, it's so annoying. <laughs> So is that for photographers? Yeah, it's meant for photographers. It's supposed to be, yeah. So, well, it, grinder. Grinder's not for photographers, <laughs> No, no, Grinder is it? <laughs> well, it might be. It, told, it, it did tell me to go and meet these guys in the wood that time, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, it's, it, people were saying it's really good. It's for landscape photography as well, so it's meant for, for us. Yeah, but look at it. I don't know. It's the two ninety nine a month subscription for three for thirty Ooh, days. But... Or you had me, Jay, until the subscription part came. Mm. Oh, that's annoying. It's, I can't stand I subscription know. services. Mm. Why can't you pay a one off fee for something? Why has everything now got to be monthly? Mm. Yeah, everything is now, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, going to going be fair, I, I use previous... rip off. Oh, go on, Sam. Oh, go, no, go going on, back Sam. to our previous conversation, that's one thing I think will happen with the, the cameras eventually is they'll end up being subscription. Did someone say about that? I'm sure I had a conversation with someone who was saying that there's going to be... Who was that? Saying that cameras, you're going to be able to get a camera on a monthly subscription and then when the, when a new one comes out, you'll be able to... Who was that? They're, they're already kind of doing it with um, firmware updates, aren't they? Because Sony are starting to roll out paid firmware updates. Are they? Rather, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw that. That Like, you've got your camera, obviously, and then it, it kind of ties in with the camera. I mean, I know this is not to do with weather apps, but <laughs> the cameras are kind of hitting the limit on the, uh, on the hardware front, but the firmware updates... They'll actually, I'm pretty sure it's Sony where you'll pay like a one off fee of like eighty hundred dollars whatever it is, and it'll give you access to the latest firmware. It's um, ridiculous. And it's isn't kind it? of like a subscription type thing where they're going to start rolling out firmware updates and you've got to pay for them, basically. It's clever, very clever. Mm. But, I don't uh, think, I, I, think it's, I think it's extortionate, to be honest with you, but. It's the way of the world. I, I mean, that it is the way the world's going. Everything seems to be uh, uh, subscription-based models nowadays, mm. doesn't it? Looking at, I'm just logging into this viewfinder. Looking at my phone to answer your question, Daz. I've got Met Office. I've got Clear Outside. I've got Windy. I've got Venture Sky, and I've got XC Weather. There you go. And I look well, at all I of must them. Admit, <laughs> uh, apart, I mean, I've got Clear Outside, the Met Office. Windy is one I've heard of. I've also, I've not got it, but I've got. Is it why? Why are, um, 
that one was pretty accurate actually i don't know why yeah why i don't know why i stopped using that one um but yeah but normally it's my default is is met office and that that is it really uh, and then i'll check on clear outside but i know you know when i was talking to Stu when was when i was in the lakes kind of a few weeks ago christmas and we was what well, Stu was talking about um you know the long range forecast, and I think that guy you put me onto, Stu, in you know on on mm. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I started yeah. kind of following him a little bit. Admittedly, I didn't really kind of understand the graphs too much because there wasn't much of mm. a description. It was just a graph. So I think you have to kind of, I'd have to get my head around how it actually works. But um, yeah, I think I was looking for something that was more like long range. You know. Um, Trouble is, Dave, you're not you're never gonna get it. Even even the, the top weather guys are never gonna give you any solid predictions. Look what happened last week. I don't know you we watched the weather last week because they were talking about this this low that was coming up from the south that was supposed to hit the south of England or potentially the Midlands, it was gonna give a massive snow event. And even until I Mixed think it, two or three right. days before it hit, they still weren't unsure how close this low yeah. was gonna come to the UK, where it's gonna go south. And that, that, and you're looking at about 100 different model runs. So they call yeah. these, I'm a bit of a weather geek, they call these ensemblers. Mm. So they, they run about 100 different runs of different models through a through an algorithm, and it throws up what it thinks to be the the route that this low will took. Nobody could agree. There was no agreement between them. And even, it, as I say, two or three days before, they still couldn't agree. So if you're looking for a long-range forecast, it's pretty much non-existent, yeah. really. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Well, I just installed this viewfinder, and apparently Michael from Dunstable wants to meet me for camp fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, don't about the weather, though. Who cares, eh? <laughs> Guess it's going to be wet. <laughs> no, nice. okay. So no one could offer anything really other than what I've already got, basically. So uh, no, I recommend, I'm... I should say. Mm, yeah. So, okay. Like I said, I think if you're in specific, like if you're in the lakes or you're in Snowdonia and you're in, there's, a, you know, you need to be very careful about the actual, you, or you need to have a service that's going to give you like the mounted weather like, yeah. rather than standard, you know. But if you're where we are, mm. yeah. BBC. <laughs> yeah. Makes no odds, does it? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's, looks shit. It's going to be shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we. I hope we've cleared that one up for you. So, you know, if anybody, if yeah. if anybody's got any suggestions, though, of course, stick them in the comments. We're always yeah. always willing yeah. to. Oh yeah. yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Mm, yeah. yeah, we 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 definitely want to see <laughs> what you've got in the comments. <laughs> oh, bad too much to <laughs> yeah. drink. How, how oh, can someone else run this for the last ten minutes? How many more brew dogs have you got to go before that crate's finished? Do you know, I haven't had that many. I think I've just had one of those. No, 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 because you've got a crate you know. of it that you did. Yeah, you did. Oh no, this is it. This this little bit here is that's the end. That's the last one. That's the it? end of the brew dog. Yeah, right. and that's done two pub cars. Brew dog is no two. more. <laughs> the brew dog is no more. I shall be on normal beer, normal normal service show resume next week. Have you got your uh, story ready for Beth when you leave the podcast? What's well, about the fact that you told her that you were going to be good and you weren't going to drink too much, and now of course you're yeah, uh, she's um, you're not yeah. I'll be. I'll, it's amazing how quick you sober up when you're getting told off. Yeah, I've you know got a topic mean? for next week. Oh, I'm not here next week. Um, I've got. Oh. A, I've got a. That's I've got a, topic. a topic for. Um, why don't we share? A good. Oh wait a minute! You're not here. Why don't we no, no, share? No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me start again. And then he doesn't have to. No. Let, me, let me start again. When I'm back, why don't we share our favourite animal stories? <laughs> <laughs> right. Why don't we share our a black and white photo? Like okay, the only right. reason I'm saying it Have is you because... you not done that before? Like an old-fashioned photo or <laughs> one that we've done on purpose? <laughs> oh, just, yeah, one that we've done on purpose. What do you mean an old-fashioned photo? <laughs> well, because all photos were black and white back in the day, weren't they? They didn't have colour. I'm not that When you were younger, 
When you were younger, though, when you were younger, yeah. did you think that the world was in black and white? You know, like, like, like when you used to watch television and, like, say, say, say you watch, like, a Charlie Chaplin or a Harold Lloyd film. No, because like I had a f- when you, pair I mean, of I'm, eyes. I'd I'm look talk- away from the telly and it was in colour. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you mean? Did you think the world was in black and white? You know what I mean? Like, before you were born... So before you were born, like black, yeah, before you were had like born, black did you think films, <laughs> was it black and white? Did you think that everything was black and white? <laughs> no. <laughs> Gal, when you was younger, did you drink brew dog? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> oh, mate, you are funny. You really cheer. Sorry, anyway, we're sharing a black and white photo. Right, so the only reason is because, obviously, I had blue skies the last couple of days, and... Uh, I, I took um, a photo of a, a Harrison sticker, which that kind of fell means an awful lot to me, actually. So, and, and it, I'm actually recording this on my laptop, but behind my laptop is my Mac. And I've actually got the photo up now, and I've just kind of converted it to black and white because I think that's how I'm going to process it. So, because obviously I'm being a bit selfish, because I've, <laughs> I'm looking at my own black and white photo, I just thought, well, that would be a good idea if we shared black and white photos. But if I hadn't have converted this to black and white, I would think that was a terrible idea. But mm. um, as selfish. I've got one, yeah, why don't we... Uh, so we'll share okay, our best so black and white photo. Right. Yeah. When you're back, when you're back, yeah. we'll share our favourite black and white photos. Because yeah. I always find that, I always find that the photo sharing and like when we judge competitions and those, they go down brilliantly on the podcast. Mm. They're really, you know, they're really popular on the podcast. So we we would, but we'll definitely do that when you're back. Yeah. We'll share our favourite black and white photo. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But have you got any non-photo related things you can throw in for us for next week when you're not here? Well, you want to drop in the comments? Yeah, All if right. you want. Drop it in the group. Right, or... Put it in the group, yeah. I mean, and, and again, we'll throw it open to everyone because, I, I, like, there was one here that we did we haven't actually answered this week, which was um, one that we were going to answer from a, from a, a subscriber. But we do really. He's eating it. Well, it. you're rabbiting on, so I'm just having a nut. You know, carry on. Don't mind me. <laughs> there was. We we really appreciate your. Um, you know your your questions so if you've got any questions for us again please stick them in the comments because we do we do we have run out really essentially haven't we yeah yeah put them in yeah yeah it's always good yeah because i yeah. tend to put m- yeah. more in than anybody and then i'll get slammed for my ridiculous questions what um Daz, you are like the king you're the king of comments Without a doubt. What we're watching on Netflix at the minute. Is there any new series coming out that's worth watching? Because I've I'm I'm running out of things to watch. Oh no. I tell you I tell you something to watch, right? That's a good and topic. I, I I absolutely loved it. Um From. Have you heard of that? From? No. It's not on Netflix, oh. it's on Sky. No, I haven't got right? Sky. It's, it, honestly, it, oh well. Okay. <laughs> but it's really good. From it's uh, if if any of you guys have got Sky, it's well worth watching. It's like it's from the people who I think it's from the people who did Lost. Oh, okay, I like Lost, but but it's um oh, I I I never watched Lost, but I absolutely it's two seasons in and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Twenty episodes, well worth watching. So from mm. that's it for me. I think you seen the film yeah. Boogie Nights. Boogie, oh, no. what, it's uh, a good Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, yeah. I watched that. Um, yeah. uh, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that that's a good film. That is a good film. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I watched I'd that recommend the series Boat Story. On okay. There. What's it about? It's kind of um <laughs> it's kind of about a couple of people who find normal people who find some oh it's about a boat. God. I'm a bit I'm a bit slow. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of it's it's like Sorry, if sir. Quentin Tarantino teamed up with the Coen Brothers and made a BBC series, it's a bit like that. 
Oh, yes, it's on BBC, isn't yeah, it? Both it's on, Story. It's on iPlay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I did fancy that. I looked at it and thought, ooh, yeah. yeah. Quite I'm watching that. Vikings as, as, again at the moment. That's very good, if you fancy that. Okay. Mm, never appealed to me, that one. Did it we not? just finished uh, that uh, Fool Me guys... Once thing that's that's number one at the moment in the Netflix channels. Oh, yeah. But we, I've, been, I've been recommending yeah, that. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we've got to watch that. Yeah, thing. good. What about, um, do any of you guys like Star Trek? No. Are any of you guys Trekkies? No, really. No. Oh, not of this. Yes. Okay. Well, don't bother with that then. The, the the new Star Trek, the new one, Strange New Worlds, that is brilliant. That is so good. Really, really very good. Mm. I really enjoyed that. It's on Paramount Plus, by the way. Subscription only. Um, but that's well worth watching. And I'm very much looking forward to the uh, Rick and Michonne uh, series, which is The Walking Dead. Because uh, I love The Walking Dead. Um, and there's a new thing. Clearly, none of you watch that because you're all looking at me with blank expressions. No, yeah. I couldn't get into Walking Dead. No, I couldn't. Oh, I really, oh, My no. kids liked mm. it, but and they kept recommending. Yeah. I kept trying it, but I, yeah, it just it's like, it's like Breaking Bad mm. as well. Couldn't get into Breaking oh, Bad. Yeah, I, managed, I, managed, I, managed, I couldn't get into I managed that. one season of Breaking Bad. Oh, I, I love that. Yeah. I just couldn't. Oh, I love that. Yeah, just couldn't. Yeah, it I just did. didn't do. But having said that, there is a few things that I've tried um for years to either read or watch and couldn't get on with it then all of a sudden i don't know something's just happened and i what i couldn't get on with years ago i absolutely love um Mm. i watched game of thrones i watched game of thrones up to episode four about three or four times before i got into it and then i love game of thrones after that but i struggled really struggled at the beginning i was like oh god i just don't get this my missus was like that. It, it's quite slow, yeah. but it's such a big story yeah. that they've got to cover yeah. quite a lot in in a few episodes, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, it's slow to yeah. get going, isn't it? But I did. I, I, after that, I love Game of Thrones. Mm, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. except for the last season, which was rushed. Yeah, they rushed it. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, and again, again, if you if you guys have got anything mm. you recommend us to watch, yeah, you know, for Jamie because he's got nothing. Yeah. Uh, um, do you know when yeah, when when you on, find something that looks interesting to watch, it's either dubbed or it's got subtitles. Oh, I can't stand watching stuff that's dubbed. You know, you watch you watch the first few seconds and the mouth doesn't tie up for the uh, for the voice. That's it. I'm not watching that. Just I think I think worse than that is when they cancel stuff. Like I I there was this one thing I watched. This is a while ago. It was called Awake, and it had Jason Isaacs in it, and it was really good. Right, I really hmm. it was a brilliant like premise. So. It was this guy, and basically he was a detective, and he would solve mysteries, you know, like detectives do. And his son, had, his son and his wife had died in a car crash, right? And when he went to sleep, he would dream, and in his dream, his son and his wife had survived, and he had to solve very similar mysteries, and they all connected. I remember that. It was, like, it was really brilliant. It was like two two seasons. Mm. It was brilliant, and they cancelled it after two seasons. And it, the ending was just like, like the most rushed thing you've ever seen. And I was like, mm. why have they cancelled this? It was so frustrating. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. awake, agree. Yeah, are we done? I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. I think we've run it out, haven't we? Mm. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, it's mm. been. It's, I mean. Look, you, you're not going to get this kind of highbrow photography conversation anywhere <laughs> no. else. Sorry, but you're just <laughs> no. not. And that's without Dave and Adam. Imagine when they're no. back. Um, but um, thanks so much for watching. Um, we really appreciate it. All the stuff that I've mentioned that I've forgotten about, stick in the comments. It'd be great to talk to you about all those things that I've totally forgotten about. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see you all next mm. week. Goodbye. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> see you. Bye. See you guys. Bye. 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 You keep waving that empty pint glass about. <laughs> it's like a pointer. It's not empty. You know, yeah. it's still sitting there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I'm brilliant. so sorry if I've... Um, Sam, I'm spe- specifically <laughs> sorry to you. <laughs> there you go. Straight away, apology. <laughs> <laughs>